Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my great pleasure to introduce House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer, who's a former chair of the U.S. Helsinki Commission and an outspoken champion of human rights around the world. Well, thank you very much. I, I apologize for interrupting the program to have uh, so many people who know so much more than I do uh, who, are, who are speaking. Uh, but I am pleased to have this opportunity to greet all of you, welcome you to Washington, D.C., this 70th anniversary uh, commemoration uh, of a tragic event. And uh, the problem of amnesia is one that too many peoples in the world have and need to be reminded of the inhumanity that man can visit upon uh, his fellow kind. I want to thank uh, uh, Alex uh, Storzinski uh, from the Kosciuszko Foundation uh, for his leadership. And uh, I don't know whether Dr. Billington is here, uh, but uh, Dr. Billington we're all very proud of. We're in his library, America's library, the world's library in many respects. Uh, Dr. Billington, of course, is one of America's uh, and the world's real Russian experts, uh, certainly in our country. And uh, he is a, a wonderful leader of this library. Senator Mikulski and Senator Cardin are not here yet. Uh, I don't know whether the Ambassador uh, Kubietsky is here. Is it, Mr. Ambassador, uh, good to be with you, sir. Mr. Ambassador, let me convey uh, to you the gratitude of the Congress and of the people of the United States for uh, the Poles' extraordinary response as an ally, as a friend uh, who has helped us in a lot of different ways in our joint effort to, to maintain freedom and safety and security uh, around the world. Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> now, as Ambassador uh, Kisiak here? He'll be here later. I, and I see Mr. Brzezinski, and I'm introducing him so I know he's here. But let me make a few remarks, uh, if I can, uh, first. In April 1940, over 21,000 Polish prisoners of war were murdered. Polish officers, clergy, administrators, police personnel, border and prison guards were annihilated without trial or sentence. These were the victims of an undeclared war. Their murder was an offense to the laws and conventions of the civilized world. Their dignity as soldiers, Poles, and human beings was trampled underfoot. The trenches in which they were buried hid their bodies. And the truth of the murder, the world was never to know. The families of the dead were robbed of their rights to mourn for their loved ones and remember them. The earth covered the traces of the crime, and the lie would erase it from the memory of man. Those are not my words. They are the words of Lech Kaczynski, Poland's late president, in a letter written last month to the Katyn families. And they were the basis of the speech he was to deliver at the site of the massacre. A copy of the speech was in President Kaczynski's possession as his plane crashed on April 10th, wiping out in an instant much of Poland's top leadership, along with relatives of the Katyn victims. Mr. Ambassador, as you know, we have formally extended our deepest sympathy and regrets. Let me repeat them on behalf of all of my colleagues uh, from all parties uh, uh, unanimously. Uh, extend to you our deepest sympathy and to the Polish people. Those deaths bore an awful resonance with a 70-year-old crime. Stalin's attempt, of course, to decapitate the Polish state. And in a painful irony, what was to be a time of healing and reconciliation was turned into a new cause for national mourning. Tragedy layered upon tragedy. But even in the face of these tragic losses, these human things remain. The courage of the Polish people, who gave a half century's resistance to occupation and tyranny. 
the memory of the dead and of those who love them, who sought the truth, truth about Katyn and kept it alive in the face of a powerful lie. The unity of the Polish people who put aside their fierce democratic differences to mourn together this spring. That courage, that memory, that unity has been our answer to disaster. From disaster to disaster, from father and mothers to daughters and sons, the idea of a free Poland was handed down until in the face of April's tragedy, we can at least say this. Its truth was spoken aloud immediately. It was written in a free press immediately. And it was clear immediately that Poland's democracy would outlive those who died so tragically in its service. I know that those are small things in the face of the loss, but they are all the difference in the world. Edmund Burke wrote that a free nation, and I quote, becomes a partnership, not only between those who are living, but between those who are living, those who are dead, and those who are to be born. That is why Poland holds the memory of Katyn sacred, because its victims are not only martyrs, but partners in the freedom for which they died. Now it is my privilege to introduce a Polish-American who has fought so valiantly, so courageously, so effectively for freedom throughout his adult life. Zygmunt Brzezinski, our former National Security Advisor, professor at Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies, and a Polish-American of whom we are all proud, but to whom we also owe a great debt of gratitude for his service to this country and to building the bridge between his land of his ancestors uh, and this land of opportunity in which so many Poles have found sanctuary, opportunity, and success. As Dr. Brzezinski eloquently put it himself in 1989, only the truth can serve as the basis of true friendship between the Soviets and the Polish peoples. The truth will take, make a path for itself. The relationship uh, between uh, the Polish people and the Russian people is worthy of reconciliation, of building, of strengthening, just as the relationship between America and Poland and America and Russia is worth strengthening. I've been to South Africa. Many of you have perhaps been to South Africa. They had a Truth and Reconciliation Commission where people who had done awful things came together and told the truth and the expectation that the truth would lead to reconciliation. Ambassador Brzezinski has been a bridge. He continues to be so in this country a Polish-American of which we are extraordinarily proud. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ambassador, we appreciate all you have done. The former National Security Advisor for the Carter Administration and advisor to this day to all of us in the Congress of the United States and two administrations. Mr. Brzezinski, 